Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is January the 13th and it is a Friday. So Friday the 13th. I'm glad I'm not superstitious whatsoever. Good news, at least I hope so, especially on a day like today. I think everything was resolved with the PayPal issue and um, everything was refunded. And further claims by various of these companies who were attempting to pull the funds from either my PayPal account or if that was overdrawn from my checking account, which I have to have as a backup for PayPal as a business account. Uh, that's over and done with. I got everything back and uh, I paid off a couple of the bills that were outstanding and got that sorted out. Hopefully no further issues will uh, raise their ugly head and uh, life will be normal again. So, since everybody has been so interested in my little chit chats about film, I decided to dig up a bunch of my silver and color C-type prints. I have them stacked over there out of the way. But I wanna discuss a interesting topic. We talk about black and white, film photography but very few of us that were lucky enough to be able to process their own color film and print at home in the old c type c22 i believe it was called processing system i was able to do that so and i also had it available at work i was able to work with a couple of very high-end labs when i was uh, military active duty I was at the Supreme Headquarters Allied Powers Europe in Belgium. I was with the International Forces, which are basically all the NATO countries. And I worked in the photo lab there. Upon my return from Europe, I was assigned to the Army Audiovisual Center at the Pentagon and went straight over to Fort Myers, which is right across, and worked in their color facilities. So that was awesome. I guess the experience I gained in Europe paid out and as I was getting interviewed, as I was processing in through the military, they asked me if I knew how to do color processing and printer, and I said, yes, I do. So I got the job, the position, just, uh, actually. So, and I can come up with a bunch of really interesting uh, stories about how we used to work in that particular lab. Remember, we were responsible for all the presidential photographs, and so we, had to match whoever president's skin tone was you know in in power at that time so that was quite crucial and talk about color management when the term color management wasn't even known so anyway but before we get into those subjects i want to talk a little bit about color printing in the old-fashioned film days now here's a shot that I took. This is the Cathedral Notre Dame in Paris. And uh, we were only about 10 minutes away from the uh, French border. So it was a matter of uh, simply either uh, hopping on a bus or taking the uh, train, which was about 15 bucks, I think, to get to Paris. So we were able to go visit Paris quite a number of times and other areas in France. And these two women, I guess they're Indian. They have very colorful dresses. And as you can see, the whole color balance is a little bit yellow. And um, I don't remember having done it purposely this way, trying to neutralize it perfectly neutral. I thought I liked the, uh, this is back in 1981, I would say. And I guess I was more interested in capturing the late afternoon uh, kind of subdued lighting. You see there's no heavy shadows, but it, 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 lo it, it looked kind of bright and, and kind of warm to me that afternoon. And so that's what this is like. Now, when you go to the digital realm, you're able to neutralize everything. I mean, just make it as neutral and basically without any of this nice warmth that this uh, particular film and when I printed it, you know, gave me. So, although this is probably many fold more accurate, 
to me, even though I love the picture and I've gotten used to printing neutral, it just doesn't have that, that look. You know, it just doesn't have that nice look. Now, think about this way. When you are printing in the darkroom, your negatives, and they happen to be color, you don't have any, any control over contrast. It's not like printing black and white. You had the ability to either buy multi-contrast paper, and then you needed some filters to um, go through a range of different contrast ranges. So if you had a high contrast negative, you could use a number one filter. If you had a low contrast you know, negative, you can use a number four filter, for instance, and increase the contrast that way. With color, it was, you just print it. That's the only control you had. So as far as contrast, you had no control over saturation. This is a saturation the film provided me. Unlike digital, which you have complete control. In fact, I could select that pink color along with this more purplish pink color and change it without affecting anything else. And that would be totally fake. So to me, this is a very real quote unquote rendition of the film negative. Whereas when you do a digital capture, you have total control of the situation. Now you can choose to do a, a so-called um, documentary rendition where you, know, you would think you would be presenting this to a courtroom and it has to be perfectly accurate and unchanged and non, unadulterated in any way. But really, I could, I could actually select this blue or cyan of the dresses and change it to a, this color selectively without affecting anything else and that to me even though I love the freedom and control I try not to ever use that okay or abuse that all right now if I have a sample of the dresses and these colors very difficult to capture correctly the sensors and cameras don't have the ability to really capture this type of uh, blues and deeper purples and that that sort of realm of the, of the spectrum. They have a bad time uh, capturing that accurately and you may have to resort to tricks like that or you can profile the camera, okay? Everybody talks about profiling your, your, your monitor and making profiles for printing, but you can also profile the camera. So actually it creates a profile that corrects the so-called inaccuracies of your camera sensor able to capture colors naturally as, as they're supposed to be uh, seen by you, the human uh, being with the human eyes. So I had no control other than burning in, dodging, okay, and exposure. And of course my color balance was, was controlled by using slight variation of yellow and magenta filters in my, in my enlarger lighthouse okay the housing you would actually insert these little cell uh, not cellophane but i think they were gelatin filters some of them are more um, of a synthetic type material and that would allow you to control your color balance so the more yellow filtration you would add the opposite would occur to the print it would become more bluish or optical blue if you subtract yellow you would actually have more yellow. If you subtract cyan, I mean magenta, you would have more green and so on. The idea was that paper was uh, kind of made in such a way that you really never use cyan filtration, okay, in your, in your uh, light housing, right above the negative or right, usually right above the negative because you did not want um, any any degradation of those filters to actually affect your image because if you put them below the negative then you know the, the the negative image has to pass through those filters and if the filters are in the least bit scratch it will affect your final image as it passes through the lens so we used to put our filters above the negative far enough so that it would not be in focus and so no control whatsoever other than exposure dodging burning in and filtration. I could not change a particular color 
to whatever I demanded it to be. I could not do that. I mean, there's, I guess there's tricks that you can do with masking and, and so on, but it was way beyond our capabilities at that time to be able to do that and do that successfully and economically because we had to crank out work as, as fast as it came in. Uh, they expected it within hours. So anyway, over here we have my digital rendition of this wedding. And think of these girls just like those ladies. And at, bit, at this point, I can actually adjust everything. I can not only adjust contrast, I can do what I could not do with color, which was adjust saturation. Can you imagine? No way I could do that. I could actually bring out contrast where it didn't exist locally. I could actually sharpen. I could not sharpen my actual you know, negative any more than it was already uh, sharp or unsharp right off the camera. That was my fault. If it was not focused, there's no way that I can add artificial sharpness like you can with the digital. So the idea here is that I always try to keep it as natural as possible. I don't like to oversaturate a lot of the images that you see. A lot of the prints that you see nowadays just simply don't look that natural. And Unfortunately, people get used to that as generations. New people get into the, the craft of printing. People begin to get used to this oversaturated look and a kind of unnatural look instead of keeping it more natural. This looks exactly like I did. Remember it. You know, this has not faded at all. I have some other ones that are just totally faded and that's probably due to uh, insufficient washing or removing any any of the chemicals out of this emulsion so that you just have the dyes that are uh, composing the image. Now, will this fade in the light? Absolutely. Faster than this will. Okay. If I leave this bye-bye window within a few months, it will be totally faded. And that's how, that's how it is. These images were not that um, great as far as longevity went. So that's a disadvantage but the look is there and you put this under glass and you hang it up and it will last you for years and um, even even sealed in an album uh, they start to fade because it's a chemical process that takes place and that is always due to insufficient washing and no one no one ever really wash their prints their finished prints sufficiently all right that is it. I just didn't want to make this too long. I just wanted to uh, kind of discuss a little bit about the controls that we had or the lack of controls that we had back in the day with uh, printing C type prints in color as opposed to today with the full digital process. Thank you so much. Boy, we are about to hit 5,000 subscribers and I'm really, really uh, thankful for that. Huge gratitude for you. Uh, from me f toward you guys for um, continuing to support the channel and new people are coming in. All right, so next I'm going to do a video where I'm gonna show you some of the other prints that I have uh, uncovered. They were in my closet upstairs and I went ahead and decided today to get them out. So thank you once again. Don't forget to subscribe, share and like, click that little bell. And until the next time, happy printing everybody. If you print with film, Happy printing with film is wonderful, wonderful, lost, almost a lost art. Happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.